It is 7 p.m. on Wednesday, October 6th, 2021, and we're going to call to order the Ottawa City Commission meeting for this evening. Would you please proceed with the roll call? Mayor Kaler? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Crowley? Who's here? Present. Commissioner Skidmore? Present. Commissioner Jorgensen? Present. And Commissioner Wigan? <coughs> Present. I want to welcome everybody who is in the audience today. I just want you to know um, those that are here because you're required to be here. Is it 30 minutes? How long does she require you to be here? You know, you can be here longer than that, I'm saying. But we're really, really glad to have students back um, in the Auto City Commission meeting. Um, and it's always, uh, it's, it's always sweet to look out and see um, those that are trying to understand what's going on in, local, um, in, in our local municipality. So uh, welcome to everyone who is here today. We begin every meeting with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the invocation, which tonight will be led by Pastor Todd Miller from Cherry Street Wesleyan. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, good evening. As usual, it is an honor uh, and a privilege to be here with you uh, this evening. Thank you for asking me to be here. I'm in my chaplain uniform tonight, uh, fire department chaplain uniform. It is fire prevention month, and I have got to, I got to spend every day this week at Lincoln Elementary with your fire department and watching your firefighters instruct these little ones on fire prevention, and it was an awesome, awesome, been an awesome time out there, so thank you for that. We have two more elementary schools to go, and we're really looking forward to that. So uh, tonight I'd like to pray for them. I'd like to pray for all your first responders here in the city. Um, with the chaplain's job, I've got to know a lot of them, and they're, you've done a good job. You've done a good job. Thank you for that. So let's bow. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the leadership of this city, this awesome city. I thank you for speaking to them and guiding them in ways that only you can. I thank you for having leaders that have open hearts to you um, and, and do their best to listen and to guide in ways that bring you glory uh, and in ways that um, help to benefit all of the, uh, the people of this city. I thank you for the first responders here um, in Ottawa and for the first responders all over the United States, um, but particularly the first responders here in Ottawa. What a great group of people you've put together here, God. Thank you for their leadership. Thank you for their heart to serve, their heart to just be available and be willing to uh, do whatever it takes to keep us safe and to keep us going in the right direction. God, again, thank you for the leaders here. Speak to them tonight, as you always do. Open their ears and their hearts to your leading so they can lead us, the people of this town, in a way that brings you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Todd. We really appreciate your words, and thank you for serving as the chaplain. We appreciate it. That moves us on to the consent agenda, which includes minutes from September 13, 2021, and September 15, um, regular meeting. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I would make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same <coughs> sign. Motion carries. All right, that moves us on to public comment. We actually do have an individual who has registered to public comment, and we actually have three individuals um, who are a part of this presentation, and I'm gonna read the paragraph before I yield to them. And then I will certainly ask if there are others who may have public comment for today. Subject to the above restrictions, persons who wish to address the City Commission regarding items on the agenda may do so as that item agenda is called, or as that agenda item is called. Persons who wish to address the City Commission regarding items not on the agenda or but are under the jurisdiction of the City Commission may do so at the time when they are called upon by the Mayor. Comments on personal matters and matters pending in, tr in court or other outside tribunals are not permitted. Speakers are limited to three minutes and any presentation is for information purposes only. The governing body will take comments under advisement. 
Do we have individuals who um, have registered for public comment today besides those that are on our agenda? Okay. Um, today we do have a presentation by individuals from the Muncie Tribe, um, and this has been led by Connie, Hilde Connie Hildebrandt, um, who has asked to make a presentation today about um, some, uh, some movement by um, the Muncie Tribe and um, a request, I believe, for us. So, um, Connie, what do you have to tell us today? Do we got you? I think I could see it on there. Oh, she's muted, isn't she? Yeah. Looks like it. There you go. Are you unmuted now? I think so. Great. Welcome. Can, can you hear? Can you hear me? Yes, we certainly can. Welcome to the Auto City Commission. Thank you. Um, my name is Connie Hildebrands. I'm the interim chairperson for the Muncie Tribe in Kansas. I'd like to say a niche or thank you in Muncie language for allowing the Muncie Tribe in Kansas to speak. I hope that you received the information that I sent about our tribe's history. I just want to let everyone know that the Muncie Tribe in Kansas is trying to regain what was lost between 1897 and 1900 as the U.S. government neglected to extend the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934 to our ancestors to reestablish our tribal nation. That's what we are working on now. We want our identity of birthright back, including our language, culture, and heritage. We want to educate the public and the descendants about our history as well. Reorganizing the tribe and regaining recognition would help to restore some of the collective history that has been lost. My goal is to get us re-acknowledged before any more of our Muncie descendants pass away. There's two special people that I want to acknowledge, and that's my parents, Henry and Ramona Hildebrandt. My mom is a Muncie descendant. They both know how hard we have been working on this for the past several years and are very supportive and helpful during this process. I like to get re-acknowledged before something happens to them or anyone else. The Muncie Tribe in Kansas would greatly appreciate the support of the City of Ottawa in pursuing re-acknowledgement of our tribe. Now I'd like to have our historian and researcher, Mike Ford, fill you in about the dissolution of our tribe. Mike. Mr. Ford, are you there? I'm not seeing Mr. Ford on our on our list of participants tonight. Is there somebody else that you'd like to call upon? Yeah, Mike Ford, he's on. He's on mute. Okay. Um, would he have another a name underneath his? Michael Ford. It says presentation by the. There oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, he's here. Hi, Mr. Ford. Welcome to the City Commission. Hi. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? I can hear you. Great. Well, we're ready for your part of the presentation. If you've got a second. Yeah. We can. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, what do you have to so yeah, so so What do you have to share with us today? Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? 
we can, it appears as though we're getting some, uh, quite a bit of feedback there, and it looks like we might have just lost you, but I think you're coming back. Um, do you have a presentation for us today, or would you like us to move to the next part of the presentation? Mike? Connie, I wonder if we may be able to go to Sophie and um, see if we can get Mike reestablished. Mike? Sophie? I don't appear to see Sophie on a, but she may be logged in as someone else. No. I'm sorry about this. I don't. That's okay. It appears as though Mike is trying to kind of change his, his, um, his location. Do you have things that you'd like to share with us? Um, or how about this? What about if we go on and we're gonna, we have several proclamations to give and what about we circle back around with you and give you um, a few remaining minutes um, to visit with us? Would that be okay if we give him just a few minutes to reestablish himself? Ye yes. Okay, we're gonna do that. So we're gonna move on to um, the declaration. Um, at this time, I'd like to give commissioners a chance to declare any conflict or communication they've had that might influence their ability to consider today's issues impartially. Commissioners? Okay, even Commissioner Crowley's shaking his head now. All right. Um, that moves us on to new business, um, and we will begin with our proclamations and number 10 for our proclamation. Proclamation recognizing October 2021 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Domestic Violence Awareness Month focuses attention on victims of domestic violence and their children and promotes the support of shelters and community programs that serve them. Will, a, will Avril, I wanna make sure I've got that right, and I could have gotten that wrong and I'm so sorry if I did, um, and Belinda Flores will a domestic violence, with the Willow Domestic Violence Center will accept their proclamation, which will be read by um, Commissioner Wigan. Commissioner Wigan? Whereas nearly 20 people per minute are physically abused by an intimate partner, one in three women and one in four men will be affected by domestic violence. And between 30 to 50% of trans and non-binary folk will experience intimate partner violence in their lifetime. And whereas the city of Ottawa places the utmost value upon the health and welfare of all its citizens and strives to provide a safer and healthier community. And whereas domestic violence includes verbal, emotional, economic, sexual, and physical abuse, and all forms of abuse carry long-term physical and mental health implications, and whereas the effects of domestic violence reach far beyond its impacts on survivors and their abusers, causing disruption in community schools, places of work and worship, and neighborhoods. And whereas the effects of COVID-19 have created dangerous situations for survivors in our community by creating barriers to public services and public spaces. And whereas community engagement and recognition of the costs associated with domestic violence have led to innovative partnerships between local governments and health and wellness organizations, which can significantly raise awareness of the public health effects and domestic violence, of domestic violence. And whereas during October 2021, the Willow Domestic Violence Center, working in partnership with local agencies, businesses, organizations and groups sponsor and promote domestic violence awareness month to community-wide attention on survivors and their children and to promote su promote support of shelters and community programs now therefore the governing body of the city of ottawa kansas does hereby proclaim the month of october 2021 as domestic violence awareness month and urges the community to speak out against domestic and sexual violence, urges its citizens to support and assist survivors of its heinous crimes, urges community leaders to hold offenders accountable, to make prevention efforts a priority by hosting events, 
creating policies at school and work, and by supporting and participating in programs designed to reduce and eventually eliminate domestic violence as a societal problem. Signed this 6th day of October, 2021, by our Mayor Sarah Kaler. Thank you so much. And um, unfortunately, we're unable to actually physically hand this to you today, but we certainly do want to hear, hear from the Willow Domestic Violence Center. Um, Belinda or Will, would you like to um, address this proclamation? Uh, sure. Yeah, I, I, I'll kick it off, and then Belinda, you can you can fill in anything, you fill in the gaps here. Um, I'm Willie Rowan, the director of communications with the Willow Domestic Violence Center. Um, and you got so close to getting the name right. You had it right at first and then, then went to the Abra. I get that all the time though. But I uh, just wanted to say thank you so much to the commission. Um, I think a couple of things in that proclamation are really things that we are working to stress within all, all of our communities. Um, we serve not only Lawrence and Douglas County, but also Franklin and Jefferson County. And in, in all of our counties, uh, I think it's important to note that um, that domestic violence is not just physical. We often believe that it is solely a physical private family issue. And we want to bring this to the attention of the community and of the public because domestic violence is in fact a public health issue. Um, domestic violence calls make up a large amount of calls that law enforcement are called out on up to 50% and they can often be among the most dangerous calls uh, particularly if there are firearms involved. Last year, we did a study with the KU engineering department on um, looking at the, the cost differential between someone staying in our shelter and someone calling and utilizing emergency services such as law enforcement, the court system, uh, DCF, housing, uh, fire and emergency. And for every dollar spent in shelter, oh, we save eight dollars in emergency costs. Um, so it's a uh, it's a it's a big uh, public health issue in addition to being uh, a private issue. And I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. Um, this month we have a couple of presentations on that and on other aspects. We're speaking. Uh, on the 12th with Topeka Mayor Michelle De La Ila, who has a task force in Topeka uh, that deals specifically with domestic violence cases. Very excited about that conversation. Um, we've got art shows of survivor arts coming up in both the counties. I believe in Franklin County, it is on the 17th. Um, and we are, in addition, doing a series of presentations online. Um, you can get a full list of those at our website, willowdvcenter.org backslash dbam2021. But I very much thank you for your time. Um, Belinda, is there, is there anything that I'm, I'm missing or anything additionally you wanted to add being our rural specialist? Um, just a little bit. Uh, I'm Belinda, so I'm the rural specialist for Franklin County. So I'm working with a lot of the survivors uh, that's in your community. And uh, just to add, I'm bringing around uh, purple ribbons for Domestic Violence Awareness Month to different agencies and businesses. So if you see those around, that's what those are. And I'm tabling at Haley Park on October 12th, too, just to uh, give a little more awareness and share our services. Thank you so much. And certainly feel free to bring some of those ribbons by um, City Hall. We would love to have those and love to support um, uh, the awareness of Domestic Violence Month. Will do. Thank you. And, yes. And if I could just end with a little plug and reminder that we do offer trainings and presentations free of charge um, to any members of the community who might be interested, whether they're workplaces, businesses, uh, local uh, commissions or organizations, um, and faith organizations. So that is always an option, and we would love to come talk to you more about both domestic violence and human trafficking, healthy relationships, and areas uh, which we talk Well, we appreciate your service to some of the most vulnerable citizens that we have in our community. So thank you so much. Thank you. That moves us on to the next proclamation. Proclamation recognizing October 3rd through the 9th, 2021, as Fire Prevention Week. Since 1922, mm -hmm. fire departments have actively supported Fire Prevention Week, making it the longest running pu public health and safety observance on record. This year's campaign focuses um, learn the sounds of fire safety, 
Fire Chief Tim Mathias will accept the proclamation, which will be read by Commissioner Jorgensen. And the proclamation reads as follows. Whereas the City of Ottawa, Kansas is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living in and visiting Ottawa, and whereas fire is a serious public safety concern both locally and nationally, and homes are the locations where people are at the greatest risk from fire, and whereas home fires killed more than 2,770 people in the United States in 2019, according to the National Fire Protection Association, the fire departments in the United States responded to 339,500 home fires. And whereas smoke alarms sent smoke well before you can, alerting you to danger in the event of a fire in which you may have as little as two minutes to escape safely. And whereas working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying in reported home fires in half. And whereas Ottawa residents should be sure everyone in the home understands the sounds of the alarms and knows how to respond. And whereas Ottawa residents who have planned and practiced a home fire escape plan are more prepared and will therefore be more likely to survive a fire. And whereas Ottawa's residents will make sure their smoke uh, and CO alarms meet the needs of all their family members, including those with sensory or physical disabilities. And whereas Ottawa's first responders are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education. And whereas Ottawa's residents are resp responsive to public education me measures are better able to take personal steps to increase their safety from fire, especially in, in their homes. And whereas the 2021 Fire Prevention Week theme, learn the sounds of fire safety effectively serves to remind us that it is important to learn the different sounds of smoke and carbon monoxide alarms. Therefore, the governing body of the City of Ottawa does hereby proclaim October 3rd through 9th, 2021 as Fire Prevention Week and urges the citizens of Ottawa to learn the sounds of fire safety for Fire Prevention Week 2021 and to support the many public activities and efforts of Ottawa's fire and emergency services. Signed the 6th day of October, 2021, by Sarah Kaler, our mayor. Chief Mathias, would you like to come forward? And it, it's so difficult at this point to try and come over all the, but I promise you I will get it to you. Thank you very much. And I bet that, that we'll get a picture of you visiting. <laughs> okay. We'd love to hear from you, though. All right. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Commissioners. Um, my 32 years of uh, being in fire service, I have personally seen um, the good that smoke detectors have done. Countless times we've uh, arrived on scene and the family's already out. Of course, there's the other side of that and um, been on calls where they weren't out and it didn't end very well. So when we first get on scene, almost uh, automatically you can, you can hear smoke detectors. Either you, they have them or they don't. And when you get out of your vehicle, you almost automatically know you can hear them or you can't. Uh, and so we really are trying to stress uh, smoke detectors we have for so many years, 30, 32 of my years. We've given away uh, free smoke detectors for, um, I would say, we're getting close to 20, 25 years with free smoke detectors. We average about 300 a year, roughly. Um, so we should be getting, you know, pretty much every house, but that's not the case. Um, what I want to remind the public is, you know, we still have free ones. Come down, get them. Um, they do save lives. Uh, we need people to pay attention to them. We really focus at the schools with smoke detectors. We see a big push here coming up at the end of October, 1st November. We'll give away probably 150, half of those for the year because the kids go to uh, school and, and come home and tell their parents, where's our smoke detectors? Do they work? Do we have an escape plan? Where do, where's our meeting place? So uh, we really try to focus on the young kids, but we are branching out into, uh, we have done uh, the high school kids. We have done, the, we'll do a program at the college every year, and we're really focusing on uh, 
the elderly. Uh, and so we're, we focus on this one week of fire prevention week, but we, we do it year round and uh, it, it does matter. Does anybody know why it's this week by chance? Huh? The, the great Chicago fire what oh. happened. And so this is why it is the, the, this week. So uh, I believe our attorney was the winner on that one. So <laughs> I appreciate the proclamation and uh, thank you for your time. Any questions? No. Okay. Thank you so much, Chief. We appreciate it. And not only um, do you um, put um, smoke detectors in and offer smoke detectors, but you will help individuals change their batteries. I know for several years, we didn't have a ladder high enough to get to the highest smoke detector in our house. And every year, you, your wonderful staff would come and change the batteries. So um, you want to make sure everybody is safe. And we will do that. Uh, just call the fire department. We'll come out and, and put them up. What we do uh, want people to do is have their own batteries. Great. Because that does get you know, uh, expensive. And we want people to have a little bit of, of skin in the game, if you will. Yeah. So. Uh, but definitely we'll go out and put them up for you, test them, and do our best. We appreciate it. Thank it's you. a visit that you want to take to someone's house absolutely. in lieu of a visit with a fire in their home. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. We'll do it every day. And Chief, just one more thing, too. I so. think some people think when they move into an apartment or apartment house, uh, they can't uh, alter the structure in any way or, or apply or uh, plugging something in like this. But it's important that they should check to make sure there is a, a, a a fire alarm in that rental and if there's not I'm sure the landlord would be willing to let them put up wherever they want as many as they want on each level wouldn't that be correct that is correct it depends on their contract but by state law the 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 owner is required to to put them up or give them to the the occupant to put up but according to fire code and state law they have to have them in there that's good enough great so, thank you right. Excellent. thank you so much that moves us on to our uh, final proclamation for the night. Proclamation recognizing October 11th, 2021 as Home Rule Day. The Home Rule Amendment gives local government the power to make decisions for their residents based on local needs. This year is the 60th anniversary of its passage in Kansas. City Manager Richard Uniteshead will accept this proclamation. I'd like to see lots of papers on Home Rule. This is Campbell lots call me if you need help anybody here will help you out with home rule it's important to know it um, the proclamation is reads as follows um, whereas on november 8 1960 the voters of kansas approved a constitutional amendment granting cities home rule authority the home rule amendment took effect in kansas on july 1st 1961 home rule gives local government specifically cities the power to make decisions at the local level based on the unique needs and values of their residents and whereas the cities across our great state manage differing opinions and views on issues ranging from the zoning to funding for our local services and programs home rule keeps control of our community in the hands of local residents and whereas the Home Rule Amendment empowers cities to determine local affairs and government um, action, including levying of taxes, fees, charges, and other um, exactions. Uh, and whereas the City of Ottawa, Kansas, and the League of Kansas Municipalities continually work to educate and engage city or municipal officials, the legislature, and the general public about the importance of home rule and local decision making. And whereas the 60th anniversary of the passage of the constitutional home rule is a fitting time for all municipalities to engage their residents about the Kansas Constitution and local laws so that all Kansas may continue to receive as many benefits of home rule. Now therefore the governing body of the city of Ottawa, Kansas does hereby proclaim the month of October and specifically the day, October 11, 2021, as Home Rule Day. Signed this the sixth day of October, 2021, by myself, the mayor. Come on up, Mr. Neistad. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Neistad, that sounds like my father. <laughs> so, thank you very much, Mayor, Commissioners. 
Um, I, I am proud to accept this on behalf of all of you and all of our citizens because what this was about was about all of you mm -hmm. and about all of our citizens. And um, the 1959 legislature approved this constitutional amendment being sent to the citizens of the state of Kansas. And I can't emphasize that enough. This was approved by a vote of the citizens of the state of Kansas in 1960. Um, up until then, uh, we largely managed our affairs, or I should say the elected officials were under D Dillon's rule. And the esteemed city attorney can give you a, a much broader um, view of what Dillon's rule is, but suffice it to say, basically what it said was if it doesn't say you can do it in the Constitution, you can't do it. So, um, citizens in the state of Kansas were wanting more services. They were, uh, cities were growing, um, they, they needed roads, they needed trash service, um, they needed other types of services that you enjoy today and we enjoy. And there wasn't really a mechanism to do that. So um, the league had a very important role in this. A league worked with the legislature and um, a mentor of mine and a long-term league um, leader, executive director, Ernie Mosier, and I believe Frank Bean was the attorney for the league, worked with the legislature, yes, worked with the legislature and actually drafted this and worked with the legislature to bring it to the people. And it's called the Wisconsin model, and Ernie came out of Wisconsin, which was a, um, which was a progressive state when it came to allowing its local governments to do the business they needed to do. So let, let me just end with giving you some statistics from that vote. It was approved on November 8, 1960, and it took effect on July 1, 1961. It there were 346,739 votes for it that carried the day out of 617,559 votes cast in that election. Now this was 60 years ago, 61 years ago. Think about that. Um, uh, were you at K-State then? No, that's all right. Hmm, I was. <laughs> <laughs> so 92 out of 105 counties passed the measure, 92. 56.15% of the votes cast is what carried the day, and it carried in 90% of Kansas's 617 cities. And this shouldn't surprise anybody, most of the no votes were clustered around Sedgwick County. One more thing I would say, this is a constitutional right. And, and you can't forget how important that is in our government. It's a constitutional right vote upon, voted upon by the citizens of the state of Kansas saying to their leaders that they elect, we want you to have the tools to help provide the services that we need. And that's important to remember. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to circle back around to um, Connie and see if Connie has had any um, any success with reconnecting. Are we reconnected, Connie? I don't know that we are. Um, Connie, we certainly want to hear from you. Technology, as many people have heard me say, um, is wonderful as long as it works, and sometimes it just doesn't work. So uh, we'll circle back around to you here in just a little bit, but we're going to keep on moving through our agenda since it is a pretty lengthy agenda. Um, we will move on to item 13 on our agenda. Request for a resolution amending the economic development incentive policy. 
These amendments um, are related to statute change for the rural housing incentive districts. And I believe that um, Mrs. Lee, oh, City Attorney Finch, will be addressing this matter today. Madam Mayor and Commissioners, uh, as we talked at your study sessions, uh, there is a type of economic incentive called a Rural Housing Incentive District, an RHID. Uh, this last year, the Kansas Legislature passed a bill expanding the use of RHID uh, programs to include development of basically second or third floor residential spaces in historic downtowns throughout Kansas. Uh, Ottawa is one of the best preserved downtowns in the state uh, and we're very proud of it. This program and adopting this language that the legislature is now permitted into our local economic development policy will make this RHID available for uh, expansion of residential opportunities in the second and third floor of buildings in downtown Ottawa and uh, staff has urged and recommended the adoption and uh, you've talked about it at a couple of meetings and we're, uh, we're ready to answer any questions you may have tonight. Commissioners, do you have questions regarding um, the um, item number 13, uh, the resolution amending economic development instead of policy? Madam Mayor. Commissioner. I think this is a, 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 another good tool to put into our toolbox of economic development in, in our community. And therefore, I move to uh, approve the, the resolution as described in item 13 of our uh, agenda. It's been moved by um, Commissioner Jorgensen to approve the resolution amending the economic development incentive policy. Is there a second? I'll second. Commissioner Crowley here. Yes, Commissioner Crowley. I was going to say exactly what uh, Commissioner Jorgensen said, so therefore I would second it. Well, I think we've got a second and a third, which is always good to keep us rolling. Um, but uh, so it's been moved and seconded. We approve the resolution um, amending the economic development incentive policy. Is there any discussion? I would just say it's an important tool we've been missing uh, that will be very helpful once it's understood, implemented. These things always take time to get uh, used to and, and owners of buildings and developers to understand and uh, move forward, but to have uh, critical mass of people living downtown over our retail and in the core of our city that's always been a goal of mine and uh, I think it's uh, important we make this change excellent um, any other discussion if not we will proceed to vote how do you vote Commissioner Jorgensen yes Commissioner Wygand I vote yes Commissioner Skidmore yes Mayor Pro Tem Crowley yes and Mayor Kaler and I vote yes motion carries that moves us on to item 14 on our agenda. <clears throat> Request for approval of ordinance amending Article 28 site plans of zoning regulations. The planning, commission, the planning Commission has reviewed the proposed amendments and has also held a public hearing. They recommend the approval of the amendments regarding the review of site plans. Um, Mrs. Lee, what would you like to tell us about this item? Uh, good evening, um, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, the Planning Commission actually um, is instigated this item discussion um, for over 20 years the Planning Commission has been a part of the site plan review process uh, and uh, the role has changed over that time but but also in that time our developers and projects have uh, come to find it more common and and generally I think uh, the Planning Commission felt like um, while they enjoy knowing about the projects and they like looking at the project plans uh, that adding the time it takes for them to review them um, and the rarity in which they were actually adding value to the process really meant that in their mind this really belonged um, with city staff uh, to work through. However, um, as you've probably had a chance to look at this amendment, there is an, a, an ability um, should the, the final approval um, have some conditions or if the applicant's uh, site plan wasn't approved, there is an ability for the applicant to appeal the decision to um, the Planning Commission within 30 days. So that there's still always an opportunity to have a broader conversation if there seems to be something onerous about one of the regulations. Uh, but the Planning Commission did hold a hearing um, and, and do recommend to you this uh, really streamlining of our site plan process. 
Commissioners, do you have questions for Mrs. Lee? I just want to commend the, your department, Wendy, for bringing this to us. And just any time we can streamline an ordinance, make more efficiency out of our programs, and as well as the Planning Commission's uh, approval of this. So I would make the motion we approve item 14 on our agenda. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. We approve um, item 14 on our agenda. Is there any discussion? I think I'll, I'll say what Mike said too is that. Uh, so many times uh, time uh, delay uh, is frustrating uh, to developers when maybe it's not necessary as the Planning Commission has decided and uh, they like a decision more quickly uh, that they know probably will come but if you miss a day and you got 30 days till the next meeting and time is money and all that kind of thing so I think uh, this is uh, this is one thing where uh, efficiency can maybe really help us get some things done. Anything else that would like to be discussed about this? If not, we will proceed to vote. How do you vote, Mayor Pro Tem Crowley? Yes. Commissioner Jorgensen? Yes. Commissioner Wygan? I vote yes. Commissioner Skidmore? Yes. And Mayor Kaler? And I vote yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Mrs. Lee. And don't go anywhere because we're going to keep you up here for a couple more minutes. Um, our next item also has Mrs. Lee speaking to us. Can you tell us about that item, please? Recommendation to add nine residential properties to the Neighborhood Re Revitalization District. The Neighborhood Revitalization Program Review Committee has reviewed the application and recommends the nine properties below to be added to the program. For new residential, or new residential um, addresses, uh, properties located at 416 East 2nd, 521 North Chair, or Cedar, 202 South Locust, 516 North Mulberry, 128 South Poplar, 128 South Willow. Um, for a residential remodel where the owner will be occupied, 404 South Ash, 1137 South Main. And for a residential remodel in which the um, person remodeling will be selling, uh, 530 South Walnut. Um, Mrs. Lee, what do you have to tell us today? Um, well, you pretty much summed it up. I will add. Um, that the Neighborhood Revitalization Committee, after the amendments that were made several years ago, has um, resulted in a great deal more applications. We always had a strong program, um, but we have seen certainly an increase. In fact, there's already pending review <laughs> for another set. Um, I know Commissioner Jorgensen just signed off on those, so there's another set in its on its way, um, and this is this is really good because, as you know, both the construction of housing is important, but we shouldn't ever overlook the remodeling of housing as that sometimes is the most uh, economic way uh, to provide housing and, and may make it more affordable for some of our residents. Uh, so the, <clears throat> the new uh, homes have a 95% rebate for 10 years uh, and the rebate available for the remodels is for five years at 95%. Happy to answer any questions, um, but I know that all of you at one time or another has served on the committee, so you're probably very familiar. Commissioners, do you have questions regarding? Uh, Mayor, um, just to, uh, just would like to point out that uh, <clears throat> that there are one, two, three, four, five, six uh, new properties that are being sold, uh, renovated, I guess existing properties that are, that are being sold from vacant lots to new houses, and also a, uh, a, uh, a remodel improving a property. Uh, that will also be sold. So there, there's seven out of the uh, um, uh, that are being sold, and uh, I believe our housing study from that we had a chance to look at uh, a few, uh, several weeks ago indicated the capacity of Ottawa was 10 per year. So here's here's seven um, of of those 10 uh, properties uh, to be uh, to be built in this one go around. We've had more earlier this year, a lot more earlier this year, and another round that's going on. So um, I, I think uh, uh, new, new uh, homes in existing locations, uh, sites, existing uh, neighborhoods uh, is going strong in our community and, and exceeding expectations of the so-called experts of our, uh, on our community. Yep, that's right. Okay. So, uh, would that be a motion that you would want to roll Madam in Mayor, there? Oh, right. <laughs> I would be pleased to uh, to uh, um, 
approve the uh, the nine residential properties uh, as listed in item 15 of our agenda for the neighborhood revitalization uh, program. I'll happily take that motion. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. I also want to mention on that too that we appreciate the partnership. I see Ian Dickinson is here in our crowd. We appreciate yes. the counties working with us as well as the school district. This couldn't happen without all three of us agreeing to this. So we appreciate all the partners in this endeavor. Absolutely. Any uh, discussion among commissioners? If not, we will proceed to vote. How do you vote, Commissioner Skidmore? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Crowley? Yes. Commissioner Jorgensen? Yes. Commissioner Wygan? I vote yes. And Mayor Kaler? And I vote yes. Motion carries. Thank you. I'm going to call back up um, uh, one of our um, presenters from the Muncie Tribe who um, I'm sure drove the legal speed to get here, but got here safely, and we're glad that you're here so that in person you can visit with us um, about, the, um, about uh, the presentation that you have today for us. Tiaqua Mossi, Nindo Shinzi Mike Ford, Nino Ngiai, Ottawa, Kansas. That's the Muncie language. I'm Choctaw, but I've worked with this tribe for 18 years. I started working with Cleo Caleb Church in May of 2004, and I'm working with Connie Hildebrandt this time around. I grew up about 25 miles away from where their ancestors were massacred at the Ganadin Hood Massacre in the American Revolutionary War in Ohio. So that's, that's my connection as a child. That was my dad's first church as a Methodist minister out of Baker and St. Paul School of Theology in Plainfield, Ohio. But um, I've stayed this tribe now for about 15, 20 years. Uh, they moved out here from Leavenworth in a ratified July 16, 1859 treaty with the Black River and Swamp Creek Chippewa tribe. And that tribe was moved here in 1840. Um, and to go back, to kind of circle back around to what we were talking about, the dissolution of the tribe, um, the language between the 1862 Ottawa Treaty that gave the land that you, you're on right now and the language that dissolved this tribe eventually was identical. They wanted tribes to accept U.S. citizenship and dissolve their reservations and become U.S. citizens. They gave me the option of staying here as citizens and moving to Indian Territory. And the Ottawas, by 1867, moved to Indian Territory. This tribe had an attempt in 1864 to dissolve them, then had an 1868 treaty that tried to move them to the Cherokee Nation with the Delaware. They had another 1874 treaty to try to dissolve them again. And then finally, after the Dawes Allotment Act in 1887, their Indian agent up north of Topeka with the tribes up there determined that they were competent to be U.S. citizens, and U.S. Senator Charles Curtis, whom you've all probably heard of, authored a bill to dissolve the tribe, to uh, dissolve their tribal funds and to allot their reservation into, into individual 40-acre parcels like it was in 1859. Um, I think Connie had sent you a map. Yeah. That was the map of the, that was the reservation land map from 1886. All those Chippewa Muncie people had those allotments signed to them, assigned to them by the treaty of July 16, 1859. And when Charles Curtis got this act passed as part of an Appropriations Act on June 7, 1897, each of those 40-acre parcels you see on that map were issued to those people as patents of land and were taken out of federal trust and made U.S. citizen land. And their tribal funds were dissolved. And in the picture you see where they're all gathered on December 8, 1900, that's the culmination of two and a half years research of determining who was eligible to receive land and patent monies from the two tribes. And after that took place, the land was taken out of trust, but the uh, Muncie people and the Chippewa people were still taking Haskell until the 50s, I think. Uh, Lenora Vicks Howard went in 1953, and she lived out at Williamsburg. That's probably the last Muncie person that was taking a Haskell. So they've been left in limbo for about 120 years, and we're pursuing recognition through either the federal acknowledgement process or Congress, having five prior treaties with the United States from 1788 to 1900, four or five reservations, and boarding school attendance to seven different boarding schools in North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, and Oklahoma. But, um, there were only 62 people on the original roll, between 62 and 70 people on the original dis dissolution roll in 1900 in that picture that were Muncie. There's between 300 and 600 people now. 
between 300 and 600 descendants of those 62 individuals. Yeah, and probably uh, more than half of the tribe lives in this area. And they still have the tribal cemetery out there on the Camp Chippewa grounds and they're out of that 4,200 acres of land, one 40 acre allotment remains in Muncie hands. But it's not in trust or anything, it's just the family since their ancestors were dissolved by an act of Congress in 1897. So I know that um, part of your presentation was, and, and Connie, you may want to jump in here too, I'm not sure who, um, but was, I know you were asking for support from the city commission. Um, tell me more about the support that you're requesting from the city of Ottawa. We would like the city's, we would like the city's blessing on the tribe pursuing federal acknowledgement, a re-acknowledgement of its, of its tribal status. That's basically what we're wanting. We're wanting the blessings of the city. Um, and mm. you'd like that in letter form? Yes, ma'am. And do you have a sample letter already drafted or something that you've worked on that um, we can look at and review? Connie, we, Connie, I can come up with that. Okay. I, um, I know I can't, I'm only one of, of five individuals up here, but I know that um, I would like to see, you know, what you have and what you could bring to us regarding um, a support letter. I'm open to any questions you have otherwise. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I'm in two questions. Uh, when Senator Curtis uh, did the dissolution of the, cry, of the tribe, was that a, an agreement or it's just a, on one sided? Was, it, was the tribe in agreement with the dissolution at that time? They were in a position where they really had no choice. Had no choice. They were the last tribe in this area. Before 1870, you had the Peoria and Kaskaskia out that way. You had the Roche and Roche de Wolf and Blanchard's Fork, Odawa here. You had the Sac and Fox and Mississippi River out by Appanoose in that area. Mm -hmm. and you had the Mission Potawatomi that moved to St. Ray's and went to Oklahoma. By the last 30 years of the 19th century, they were the only tribe left here. And then they had tried for 35 years to dissolve this tribe to either get them to become citizens because they'd been Christianized or to get them to remove Indian territory. And the 1868 Indian, or 1868 treaty did not happen because that was the year they were impeaching Andrew Johnson and they were tied up with that, so that was never done. And then they were ignored again in the early 1880s, but there were only, I think there was 35 eligible voters for the final vote of dissolution in 1897, and there were only 62 people at the very end in 1900. So they, they were kind of behind the eight ball, and you consider between 1680 and 1859, they were moved from New York to New Jersey, to Pennsylvania, to Ohio, to Michigan, to Ontario, Canada, to Wisconsin, to Muncie, Kansas, to Leavenworth, Kansas, and to here between 1680 and 1859. So they clearly probably didn't have much of a choice. Uh, what, what would, uh, what would uh, the reestablishment of the tribe, uh, what would that mean to, what, would, what difference would that make uh, other than the recognition that it is a valid tribe? They would have re-acknowledgement as federal status. They would have a treaty-to-treaty -treaty relationship with the United States government, and they'd be a, they'd be a federal sovereign Indian tribe. So, what, what does that mean, and what is the advantage to to the survivors? Can I say something? That? Go ahead, Connie. Um, our main goal is to get our identity and birthright back, uh, our language and culture and heritage. That's our main goal right now, and we want to make sure we educate the public and all of our all of the descendants about our history. That's on our our main goal for right now. Okay. We're having to do. We're spending probably eight to ten hours every weekend working on constitution and census rolls back to 1842. I teach language twice a month. I teach their language. It's my second in indigenous language. We're preoccupied with a lot of stuff, but they would have the status back that their ancestors had. And the other thing is, you go back in their history, they were massacred in Ohio at the Ganadin Hood Massacre. They only descended from two people. They were forced to go to Ontario, Canada for their safety. The United States government fought Tecumseh on their, on their, in their community in Canada and burned their community, the Americans did. They were promised 24,000 acres if they came back to the United States in an executive order by President Monroe in 1823. They got here, 
there was no 24,000 acres. Uh, they stayed on land that the Delawares let them stay on where Muncie, Kansas is. And then the Delawares didn't like their missionaries, so they sold that land to the Wyandots and kicked them off that land. And then they were moved up to where the Fort Leavenworth Soldier Cemetery is. That's literally an Indian reservation. And uh, Charles Robinson, the first governor of the state of Kansas, was part of a group that speculated them off that land, which is why they came to Franklin County, because they wanted that land for a railroad. So they've been, they've been always been promised stuff by the federal government and stuff's never come through. Not one of our proudest times, but thank you for thank bringing you for, it to our attention. Yes, thank questions? you so much for bringing it to it. And thank you for coming down. We really appreciate it. Um, I'm interested in, and I'm sure that we would be well, we would welcome um, hearing from you or um, seeing a draft of something you would like um, regarding a letter of support from the city commission okay. at a future meeting. I have a question. Sure. Do you have a county and a city, or is this county and city combined? We we solely serve just the county or the city. There is a county commission, and actually, there's a county commissioner here in the audience today, okay. and I bet she will visit with you. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, and so she can visit with you about their processes too. Yeah, we're just looking for support for you, but this is originally Ottawa Trust land here, so sure. it would not involve any land here. Well, thank you so much for being here today. And Connie, thank you so much for your presentation. We appreciate it. Thank you. And this thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Th thank you. All right. That moves us on to item 16 on our agenda. Request for approval of resolution to set the time, date, and place for a public hearing to consider condemnation of a single family structure and any accessory structures at 832 North Main. This resolution provides notice of public hearing to consider condemnation on the above structure at, for 7 p.m. on December 1st, 2021. And Mr. Terry Elmer will be discussing the next several items. Um, so I'm going to yield to you, Terry. <clears throat> Good evening, Madam Mayor and Commissioners. Um, you know, we've got five different properties here we would like to bring forward for setting resolution in time and date. Uh, the first one is 832 North Main. Um, this one's had two different fires within the structure. First one's in uh, January 2020. Second was in June of this year of 2021. Um, and so based on that, we we're requesting that time and date be set for consideration and condemnation on this particular structure. Commissioners, do you have questions about this particular request? And this, again, is simply to set the, um, the hearing, the public hearing. Madam Mayor. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, Terry, uh, I see you, there was the first fire January f uh, 1st of 2020. I'm assuming that there was some uh, remodeling reconstruction after that one. Um, was there was no act, no uh, construction was done on the first fire. So and from what I understand, uh, the fire chief could confirm this. I think the second fire was pretty close in proximity to the same location and the same structure, but no remodel had uh, been performed. So was the first one not bad enough to warrant any kind of remodeling? Yes, it was, but it was, um, I think the property owner at that time just hadn't proceeded forward and also it has changed hands between the first fire and the second fire. Is, have you been in contact with the owner about any kind of construction they might be doing? <clears throat> On with the second fire, I did speak with the owner at that point in time, and my recommendation on because of the second fire that the structure can't be remodeled. Uh, there's too much structural damage to the second floor, and I would recommend that it be uh, taken down as opposed to renovated. Okay, thank you, Terry. Taxes paid. Where's the taxes paid? Unpaid. Taxes are taxes unpaid are, for sorry. 20, yes. And when we have that hearing, we'll go through this in, in, in great detail. This is simply just to call the hearing, correct? correct? <clears throat> yeah, when we come forward with the actual time and date with that, we will have more images and information to share at that time. Is there a... I'll make a motion to that we do call a hearing for uh, 832 North Main to uh, determine that future. Uh, is there a second? Commissioner Crowley will second. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 
That moves us on to the next item, which is the exact resolution except for um, it is a structure um, located at 119 East 8th. So, Mr. Elmer, what would you like to discuss on this one? <clears throat> Again, requesting to set time and date on the 119 East 8th Street. This structure has been abandoned for uh, several years. We've reached out or tried to find some form of contact or ownership for air on this property. We have not been able to locate anyone on this. Um, so with that, we're looking at based on the provisions and as it reflects, we are uh, behind on taxes for 2019 and 2020. Commissioners, do we have questions for um, Mr. Elmer regarding this property? What, what are, uh, I might ask the city attorney, uh, let's say we can't find anybody that belongs, but all of a sudden uh, we do have it demolished and somebody comes from West Virginia and says, hey, I, that was the house I was going to live in. My uncle had mentioned giving it to me. What What is our special recourse? Without a probate proceeding, that, that house remains in the hands of the the owner when we publish notice we publish for unknown heirs uh, and that publication is sufficient uh, to put the world on notice that that this structure is unsafe uh, and can be demolished there's no need for us to wait for a probate period of six months or, or to run or to see if there's any heirs that may come forward this process is sufficient uh, due process as to the the rest of the the world at large that the city deems this structure unsafe and needs to remove it under its police powers. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions? And Commissioner Wigan, I believe there is a provision also that I think it's uh, Blaine can policy clarify this as far as we have two years before we can't move forward. So if it sits abandoned for a period of two years in time before we can move forward with that. Okay, thank you. Any other questions regarding 119 East and 8th? Madam Mayor, I'll make the motion we approve item number 17 on our agenda. Is there a second? I'll second. It's been moved and seconded by Commissioner Skidmore and Commissioner Jorgen, or pardon me, Commissioner Wigand. Um, is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. The next is the uh, same exact an approval for a resolution to set the date and time. Um, for a condemnation of a structure at 623 West 5th, um, Mr. Elmer. Again, requesting to set time and date for consideration of condemnation on this address of 623 West 5th. This particular structure has had a petition on it in the years past. Uh, I believe we are in currently in like the third ownership on this property. Um, so nothing seems to be happening with the structure. So it's sold multiple of times and the neighborhood has put a petition out uh, for consideration to have condemnation considered on this particular property. Commissioners, do you have questions regarding this request to set um, a public hearing? Madam Mayor. Yes. Um, I move to set the time and, and, uh, and manner of uh, public hearing on this property. Is there a second? I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Uh, Terry, I didn't drive by this house. I saw a for sale sign out in front that was, appeared to be new. Uh, there's still ob obviously just to let inform the public there's a chance that someone could sell this and revamp and re remodel this house. Is that correct? <clears throat> that is correct. The current owner on this property has been in communication with me and he did pull a permit, but he let the permit expire. He did have a uh, financial record showing he was what he's proposing to do and timeline. Um, but I think it just seemed to be more than he was able to handle, and now he's trying to sell it. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those aye. opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next, um, a resolution to uh, set a public hearing to consider a condemnation for the property at 418 West 1st. Mr. Elmer. Commissioners, I am requesting or would like to request a set a time and date for consideration for a condemnation for the 418 West 1st Street. Um, this structure, I have been in communication with the owner and under discussion I had with her, she would like to have re renovated it, remodeled it. Um, she did pull a permit for electrical. We did uh, turn the electricity back on, um, but we assumed it's for the remodel purposes, but instead she moved someone in. 
So currently the taxes are unpaid um, and this house is, <clears throat> in my opinion, beyond repair and should be up for consideration for demolition. I'll make the motion that we hold a public hearing uh, in that regard. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we set the public hearing for condemnation consideration of condemnation on 418 West 1st for December 1st. Is there any other discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Um, this will be the last uh, property that we will be discussing today to consider a condemnation hearing for December 1st, and that property is located at 317 South Sycamore. <clears throat> Commissioners, again, requesting for consideration setting a time and date for consideration of 317 South Sycamore for consideration and condemnation. Um, this property, recently a uh, contractor did come in and speak with us requesting that he'd pull a permit to do some renovation on the property. Uh, no permit has been acquired at this time. So as you see, they tried to do some work on the house, um, but we don't have any record of any permits being taken out or done on the work. So um, we are still waiting to see if there anybody's going to step up and want to do any renovation so but we'd still like to proceed forward with that request for setting time and date commissioners are there questions for mr elmer regarding um the property located at 317 south sycamore uh has this one been vacant for some time and uh, people <clears throat> are living in it anyway right as you see on the front door it's been vacant for no utility or posted for no utilities but yes it's been vacant for some time Madam Mayor. Yes, Commissioner. I'll make the, I'll make the motion to approve item uh, 20 on our agenda. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion for this particular property? If not, we will proceed to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right. And the lights come back on, which is always good. Thank you, Mr. Elmer. We appreciate it. That does lead us to, actually, I consider it a sad part of our meeting. Um, I have had uh, the um, absolute privilege to serve with um, a gentleman who is stepping down um, today as our city commissioner and has done so with um, complete grace for um, several years. I, I think that, I, what did I have, 15 years? No, more Six, than that. 16. 16 yeah. years because we need that and really you did you ever really go away no <laughs> Kelly did he really ever go away no exactly and we really um, should actually uh, be thanking his wife for sharing him with us for all of these years um, Commissioner Jorgensen is uh, is moving out of the city of Ottawa um, but we uh, trust that he will still keep the city of Ottawa um, in his um, in his mind and in his thoughts um, every day, if not um, more than once a day. And so um, I do have a plaque for the service that um, uh, Commissioner Jorgensen, and actually, you know, it's really Mayor Jorgensen, and um, he has had multiple titles in the city of Ottawa, but um, we have, uh, we are all blessed to call him friend, too. Um, so in appreciation, really, of the service that uh, Blake Jorgensen has given to the Ottawa City Commission, um, for his years of service as a city commissioner in the city of Ottawa, 2005 to 2015, and 2016, he took that one year break, or I don't even know that it was a full year, was it? I can't remember. Yeah, no, it wasn't. <laughs> um, uh, to 2021, uh, we want to um, give him <clears throat> this plaque, but really our heartfelt thanks for all the service that um, you uh, gave to the citizens of Ottawa. So thank you so much, Blake. <laughs> yeah, and I actually well, am just going to really yield to Blake because I'm going to let you, you talk first even before our city manager because I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. It's been my distinct privilege and uh, to serve uh, 
the citizens of this community and to, and to work with, with the folks on the city commission and city staff uh, for the past 15, 16 years, whatever it is, and, and uh, as an appointed official a couple of years before that. Um, I had, uh, uh, it's been a long, a long time. I've seen a lot of changes within the community. And uh, I look up here at the wall on the east side of the, of the commission chambers and I see a young man uh, at, at the start. And uh, I was uh, 40 years old when I filed for uh, city commission. Uh, the election in 41 when I was uh, when I uh, was appointed uh, that, that was in April of 2015 uh, my father passed away in May of 2015 so mm -hmm. uh, that was kind of a, a, a milestone in my life not milestone but a, a, a definite uh, opinion and I think of uh, some of the things that he has said to me but the something that that uh, that uh, uh, came to mind uh, earlier today is that he had a saying that he used to say and I think it came from his uh, days as a scout but is always leave a place better than you found it and uh, I hope that uh, that can be said of, uh, of, of the term that I has spent on the City Commission also uh, a saying that somebody else had uh, brought up uh, to me as, as a mentor of mine uh, a fellow by the name of Ransom Bennett and uh, his, his saying, and I think he learned it in the military, was uh, do the most with what you have where you are. And, uh, and I think that that's something that we've done um, as a city over the past uh, several years. Uh, and, uh, and I think uh, we've, we've done uh, a lot of what we can with the, uh, like the parks, the, uh, the trails, the sidewalks, and so forth. That's been kind of an initiative of mine through the years, or, or initiative of mine. but. <laughs> Of, of the city as a whole and uh, and to, to make a make the city uh, a better place with uh, quality of life um, uh, for our, for our citizens so um, as I said earlier or have said previously I am changing addresses but I'm keeping the same zip code and uh, so uh, I'm just outside of town I, I started out uh, in Ottawa outside the community Kelly and I had lived outside of town uh, to the to the west of town uh, for when we were first married we moved into town because it was going to be cheaper and uh, and then uh, uh, when we weren't looking for for anything special um, when the opportunity to move um, into into a house that has a pond has some acreage around it uh, yesterday morning I woke up and I heard the cows uh, moving uh, in, in the neighbor and saw the saw the steam coming off the, of the ponds and that's something that I, I really kind of missed and um, and I'm glad to be a, be a part of it so thank you very much for the recognition thank you for the time that I've been able to serve and uh, and the friendships that I've, I've created within the city and, and on the City Commission so thank you very much uh, Madam Mayor, may I say something if, uh, towards uh, <laughs> Commissioner, sure. soon to be Ab ex commissioner in Georgia. Sure. And, uh, I've known Blake since he came to town. He was my banker for years and helped me uh, tremendously with his counsel and guidance and, um, and uh, 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 leadership. Uh, I think Blake will be uh, uh, missed very much. Uh, his uh, research abilities for some of the finer points of things we get into and his common sense have, I think, been invaluable uh, to this commission over the years. Uh, and I will miss his leadership and uh, presence at our meeting personally as well. I think the commission uh, will uh, miss him also for the same reasons. Uh, we we've, we've got big shoes to fill. I don't know what your shoe size is, but they're, they're, they got to be big. Uh, so Blake, thanks for your service and your dedication to making Ottawa the best uh, it can be and, and putting your best efforts forward. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Well, I've got a few things to say too, of course. I, I didn't realize how young you were when you started serving. You probably weren't even shaving then. I don't know. Where you, I know Finch wasn't when he served, but that's another story. So, But I, I appreciate uh, Blake. I know when I was considering running, I called him and talked to him, and he encouraged me to run. And 
he kind of gave me a lowdown of what to expect, and he was right on track. Uh, I think he said I could get rich on this job. But <laughs> that, I might have misunderstood him. Yeah, I, I might have misunderstood him on that. On that <laughs> but I, I do appreciate uh, you encouraging me to run and do this, and I, I, I've always thought that I'm very thankful for our friendship. You know, we compete fiercely during the day, but in, the, in these meetings here, uh, we're partners up here on this bench, and we, we think we work together for the betterment of Ottawa, so I appreciate that partnership and that relationship. There's no commercial. I remember, maybe some of you remember him. When E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. And uh, that was uh, what I think about Blake. There'd be times we'd be up here, we'd be trying to make a decision. We'd kind of get an impasse. And there was this silence that was just deafening. And everyone was thinking, Blake, talk. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were all thinking the same way. And then he would say something that all made sense, and it just kind of you know, let uh, the steam out of the room, and we were able to make a decision. So I, I appreciate your, your wisdom and your discernment. Uh, I, too, thank Kelly for sharing your husband with us all these times and, and all the trips we've had together. We've had a great time doing those as well, great memories. But I'll just say this, uh, don't forget to come back. We do have uh, the public uh, comments. So we will allow you three minutes. So <laughs> click, come back any time. Uh, appreciate it. Well, you're a good guy. Right. Appreciate thank, it. thank you. Thank you. Uh, Madam Mayor. Yes, Commissioner. Um, Blake, I haven't had the pleasure of serving with you as long as the rest of them up there. Um, I, I remember when I was appointed four years ago that uh, I was nervous as heck. Uh, I didn't know what to expect when I walked in that door for uh, uh, the interview. And uh, I think one of the first faces I saw was yours and beings that we had, you know, had, had our relationship with the bank and everything. I, I kind of felt a little bit more relaxed uh, knowing that I, I think I had a friend on my side, at least there, to, 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 you know, to kind of help me. Um, I, I agree with, with Commissioner Skidmore with, with uh, you know, you, it always seemed like when, when nobody had an answer to something, you did. Um, and, and I've always been, you know, dumbfounded on that. Because, and, and that certainly comes from your years of, of serving on the bench. Um, if we could end up with, you know, a, a portion of somebody who fills your spot, it's, it's, it, I mean, that's, 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 that's major. Uh, you're, you've been a, 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 a um, you know, big, per, a, a big part of Ottawa. And, and if you drive downtown and you see a lot of the housing and you see a lot of the new construction and the, and the good things that have happened in Ottawa, it, it, a lot of it stems from the decision, decision making you, that you've had. So thank you uh, for your, for your service. And I certainly will miss you. Thank you, Eric. Well, Blake, I um, when I came here, you your face was the only face that remains um, to when I, when I joined uh, the city commissioner, uh, the city commission, and um, I can't tell you I, I appreciate the stories, and I and I know I will get the story wrong, but I know you tell us every single year about getting the farm equipment ready before harvest, and I think about it every single year. Even during harvest, I think about Blake's story about <laughs> and every year. And so um, I do have your phone number, and I may call you randomly if I need a Blake story, um, and uh, I expect you to answer, because then we know where you work, too, and yeah. we can find you. Um, so, but thank you so much for serving with Grace. And um, we appreciate, uh, we appreciate it, I appreciate it. I appreciate all that I have learned from you. And um, I can never count the blessings that I have learned from you. I know that um, we, my child learned a really interesting lesson in our very first lift ride to the White House several years ago with you and Kelly. And um, other things that we have learned, but um, the things that I have learned, um, I, I will never be able to thank you for. So thank you. Well, thank we you. appreciate it. Thank you. So that moves us on to our city manager, which I'm sure has words that he would like to share with his friend Blake. So I, I appreciate the people that you and Kelly and your family are. Um, you are our community. You are Ottawa. And I, I appreciate your friendship and your guidance, Blake. And here, um, what I know about Blake, um, and you know, it's kind of nice you get to hear your eulogy while you're still <laughs> able to hear, right? Um, but what I know about Blake is that he's a student of human nature, and above all else, 
and you can thank your parents and your grandfather for this and I've heard those stories and I'd like to have known them is that the service you give is the service that you give and you never forget where you came from or who you are representing and what I know is that every decision that you made on this bench has been about what's best for the community how do we get there where are we going to go and I thank you for being part of the team that brought me to Ottawa my wife and I have um, never regretted that decision and I hope that um, it's been everything that um, you hope would happen so Thank you, Blake. Um, I'll still see you at workout. You're Clarissa's pet, but I guess I'll just do what I can do. And uh, I'll keep working on those stairs. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for your service, Fred. Thank you. Do you have other things that you would like to report in your city manager's report tonight? Okay. So that moves us on to um, reports by our city commissioners. And um, on purpose, I'm going to leave... Um, Commissioner Jorgensen to go at the very last, so you have the very last word, so you can decide when the end time of the meeting oh, is. Okay. So okay. no pressure there That's since we have that conversation often. But I will um, yield to um, Commissioner Wigand. I have no report other than uh, to wish Blake best in the future and we uh, feel sad that he's leaving us. Um, Commissioner Skidmore. I have nothing to add. Mayor Pro Tem Crowley. I have no report. Okay. Um, that moves us on to the mayor's report. And I actually do have several things that I want to highlight. Um, this past week, um, I was a part of the KMEA, which is the Kansas Municipal Energy Agency annual conference. This year it was a virtual conference, so we weren't able to meet in person. However, I do want to point out two um, awards that were bestowed upon um, two individuals who really truly deserved the awards that they were given. Um, our city manager, Richard Neinstead, was presented with the Gilbert Hansen Jr. Outstanding Service Award. And our utility director, Dennis Tharp, was bestowed the Max H. Embry um, Distinguished Service Award. Um, I appreciate both of these gentlemen tremendously um, on all of the work that they do regarding energy in our community never take for granted the fact that when the lights flip on they actually flip on um, and that's important but their work goes way beyond that and not only do i recognize it and i think everybody here in the city of ottawa recognize it but the whole entire state of kansas recognizes it we will be talking about these awards later on um, but i do want to just point those out and um, give them my sincere um, congratulations on um, both of those awards so thank you mr tharp thank you mr neistead i appreciate it also last week, um, my alma mater, and actually the alma mater of, I know, of Commissioner Skidmore and a few other people here in the room, um, inducted uh, six well-deserved individuals into the OHS Wall of Honor. And oftentimes, um, those individuals um, have left our community, have given their time and talent outside of our community, of which we certainly appreciate what they have given to the world. However, this year, um, OHS uh, Wall of Honor inducted three individuals who chose to give their time and talent and stay here in our community. And I appreciate the fact that these three individuals who were inducted into the OHS Wall of Honor not only um, have given their time and talent um, in the past, but continue in the future to give it. And um, I appreciate all that they do for our community. Um, Dr. Ryan Cobbs, Josh Walker, and our very own city attorney, um, Blaine Finch, who were all inducted into the Wall of Honor. And so thank you so much and congratulations. Um, I believe that that will lead me to the end of my report. I do want to announce that in case you didn't know that there is a com um, an annual conference this weekend um, for the league in Topeka. And then on the 11th, because of the conference, uh, we will not have study session, but we will have study session on the 18th. We will have our regular meeting on the 20th, and we will have our city county um, school board luncheon at USD 290 um, on the 20th also. 
and um, Commissioner Jorgensen, I do want to extend an invitation to you to event to join any one of those meetings. You are welcome to come as my guest. Well, thank you. So before we adjourn, I do want to give you a chance, um, Commissioner Jorgensen, former Mayor Jorgensen, Mayor Jorgensen, um, just all around great guy and, and friend. Um, what would you like to say to close out the meeting? Well, I, I uh, just thank you for all the kind words uh, this evening. And um, uh, I would like to thank my, my bride for the, uh, a third of a century uh, for, for putting up. Uh, <laughs> she's shaking her head. Uh, it's been my privilege over the past third of a century, uh, 33 years. But um, uh, we're going to see a lot more of each other in the evenings. So uh, there you go. thank you, Kelly. Uh, That's all I have. Excellent. And with that, we will adjourn our meeting this evening. Thank you.